Welcome to Cunningham Piano. I'm Hugh Sung. And I'm Rich Gallicini. Rich, I wanted to make a video for folks who are looking for their very first piano. Sort of like a piano primer. A piano yes. primer for either their kids or for themselves. And frankly, don't even know where to begin. Well, there's so many varieties. Hey, why don't we start with what we're sitting in front of? Oh, okay, what are we sitting in Good front of? Good idea. So we're in, sitting in front of a grand piano. A grand piano. Now, a grand piano has strings that go out horizontally. Okay. The keys are here, of course, and we measure it from the very edge of the piano here to the back of what we call the tail. Okay. And how long is this particular piano from here to the tail? Well, the European and Asian companies measure with centimeters. Okay. This happens to be hand-built in Austria, so it's 225 centimeters. They call it the 225. And it's about 7 foot 4 inches from here, from the keyboard, to the tail. Now, grand pianos get bigger than that. What's an advantage of a very big grand piano here? The bigger the piano, the longer the strings, mm -hmm. the, lo the larger this thin piece of wood underneath the strings is called a soundboard. So the combination of longer strings and a bigger soundboard means a greater range of sound. You get that rich sound. You hear other tones in just that note. Does it just mean a louder sound? It can mean both a louder sound right. and a more delicate sound. What's counterintuitive to the, is the fact that the larger the piano, the more control you actually have because the keys are actually longer in a grand piano and so you have more leverage. And that is a critical aspect that I think a lot of folks don't realize when they're learning the piano. Having that additional leverage is very, very important to learn how to touch a piano and how to get most of the sounds that you need out of an instrument like this. So not all grand pianos are this large. Okay. They can get quite a bit smaller, even under five feet. So there's a piano, a grand piano, if you wish, to fit into your space that might fit it better than this, or of course, nine foot or longer. And we usually characterize those pianos, as you were saying, mm -hmm. either by the measurement in centimeters or by feet. For instance, mm -hmm. we can say a five foot, 10 inch piano, a six or seven foot piano, or even as small as something under five feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now let's move from grand pianos to another type of acoustic piano, which is what we call the upright or vertical piano. Now an upright or a vertical piano, the strings don't go horizontal like this at all. They're vertical. So we measure them by size, by the height of the piano. And generally in inches. So a, a good sized upright vertical piano would be approximately 52 is tall. That's right. The Europeans and Asians might call that a model 130, 131 okay. in centimeters, depending on how exactly large the piano is. And what's nice about the vertical piano is it doesn't take nearly as much depth in space. So this is a great option for folks who don't have a lot of space, but still want to have the experience of playing a nice acoustic piano. And I think there are also differences in terms of the sizes of these vertical pianos. Can oh, talk sure. about that and what the differences are in terms of the sound and action. Of course. So we don't have to get a 52-inch high piano. You might want something that's a little less assuming in a space. So you can get them smaller, 48 inches, 46. Years ago, they made pianos as small as 30, 32, 35 inches. Those are generally not made today. They're called spinets. Uh, and there are a few consoles still being made, 42 inches or so. But I think the 52-inch upright pianos, what's really nice about them is that mm -hmm. they can really be a, an acceptable replacement for people who have, who want a grand piano sound and a grand piano touch. In fact, oh, yeah. many people who have grand pianos will trade them in when they're moving into a smaller space to get these larger upright pianos. Now we'd like to shift gears. Pianos have been roughly built the same designed the same structure for hundreds of years. Sure, the traditional piano, the traditional acoustic piano has not changed very much. However, there's some really great technologies that are being used in pianos today. So what's interesting is that we're starting to see a merger of digital technologies with traditional acoustic pianos. Mm -hmm. One great example of that is the silent piano. Now, we're gonna take a quick look at the silent upright piano, but this is also available in grand piano models as well. What's really cool about this is the fact that it is a fully acoustic upright piano, but what's really cool is you can plug in a pair of headphones into this piano. You can put these headphones on and hear the sound of the piano through the headphones, but nobody else hears you playing. This is perfect for people who don't want to disturb anybody else in their living space or don't want to disturb their neighbors. A wonderful solution combining the best of acoustic as well as digital technologies. Now taking that one step further, we can go to the hybrid piano. Now a hybrid piano 
comes in a variety of shapes and sizes. You can get them in baby grand sizes or, or upright models, but they have all the moving parts and actions of an acoustic piano, so they still feel exactly like an acoustic piano, but it's all digital sound. What's really interesting about that, there are no strings. Right. Now, with acoustic grand, acoustic upright pianos, those strings will go out of tune. The, the strings will change uh, their ten the tension depending on the humidity, and that's why they'll start to sound a little bit strange when they're out of tune. Mm -hmm. So we recommend for acoustic pianos, getting them tuned at least once, preferably twice or more often in the year. With a hybrid piano, there are no more strings, so you don't actually need to tune that piano. That's right, it's always in perfect tune, always ready to play. Now let's move a step further. Now we're gonna go into the purely digital realm with digital pianos, or one of the most famous brands of digital pianos, the Yamaha Clavinova. It is certainly the oldest brand, and they've made so many advances and really brought the digital piano into today's market. What's interesting about the Clavinova was that it was initially designed to be like these smaller upright pianos in terms of size, and they were designed to emulate an acoustic piano as much as possible in terms of the key action as well as the sound. And they do that so well today that we have universities that choose them by the dozens, don't yeah, we? Absolutely. Yeah, We call them class piano labs, where mm -hmm. you actually have a classroom of these smaller pianos. And because they're so small, you can fit several of them into one room. Mm -hmm. Or, of course, if you're limited in your space, you can fit them into almost any room at all. Uh, what's interesting, again, because these are purely digital, no strings to tune, and you can use headphones and practice them some also. Now, take the Clavinova one step further, and we get into what we call the CVP line of Clavinovas, which are another word for workstations. What are workstation Clavinovas? These are, they have all the action and sound of a digital piano emulating an acoustic piano, but now you can add thousands of other instruments, sounds, and sound effects, and even accompaniment styles so that you can play and make it sound like a band is playing along with you. You can compose, you can create, you can even learn on these instruments. There are systems for follow the lights where it will show you exactly where to put your fingers so that you can learn with these instruments. So they're great for beginners and they're great for professionals as well. Just as all the other instruments that we've spoken about so far, Hugh, the Clavinova can come in different shapes and sizes as well. We can get them in a beautiful small grand piano cabinet that has more speakers and a bigger tone. There is one more piano that we've got to talk about, Hugh, and that's an instrument that takes elements of all the different technologies that we've talked about already and combines them into one instrument, and we call that the disc clavier. It's quite amazing. The Yamaha disc clavier really is every piano in one. Mm -hmm. We've got a fully acoustic piano as well as a fully digital piano working together. Wait a minute. Does that mean I can put headphones on and play silently? Absolutely. You can also connect the piano to the internet and have your favorite artists stream through and play through services like Discovery Radio and even video programs like Discovery TV. What's more, the Discovery can be used to record yourself so that you can see if you're playing it really accurately. A great way to remember your kids when they're first starting their first lessons. You can see the motion of the keys from what they're touching as well as have video that's synchronized with their motions. It's a truly remarkable instrument. That's kind of everything all in one. Well, for me, one of the most exciting things that this clavier will do is what we call remote lessons. Mm. And that's where we'll have one piano in one location and another piano in another location. Could be halfway around the world. And universities might have an artist play in one location, students playing in another, and literally doing a master class or a lesson where no one has to travel to another continent. Amazing, amazing technology. We have so many universities and colleges that are beginning to use this. So this is the piano that even if you don't play the piano, you can still enjoy. And yeah. if you are a professional, you can enjoy tremendous benefits from its recording and remote lesson capabilities. So that's a quick look at the world of the piano today. It's quite exciting. Absolutely. And it can seem a little overwhelming, but I think the really good news about all of these pianos is that we can find the perfect piano for you based on your needs and your budget. By all means, call us, talk to us. Oh, by the way, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe so you'll know when we make more videos just like this. Absolutely. For Cunningham Piano, 
I'm Hugh Sung. And I'm Rich Gallasini. And we'll see you next time.